now I would like to and delighted to welcome in studio someone very familiar to our audience, Greg Palast, author of the New York Times bestsellers, Billionaires and Ballot Bandits, Armed Madhouse, The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, and the highly acclaimed Vultures Picnic. He has won the George Orwell Courage and Journalism Award for his BBC documentary, Bush Family Fortunes, where he exposed George W. Bush dodging the Vietnam War draft. He has been called the most important investigative reporter of our time up there with Woodward and Bernstein. This according to The Guardian. He's broken front page stories for BBC Television, Newsnight, The Guardian, Nation Magazine, and also Rolling Stone Magazine. Greg, thank you for joining us. Yes, uh, I'm glad to be here and uh Despite, <laughs> despite the circumstance, I'm telling and the, you. the one credit is is one I'm I'm almost sorry to even mention because I I released a film about uh, two months before the election called The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, right? Predicting that Donald Trump would steal this election and and detailing how the GOP would do it, and I never felt so bad being right. Yeah. Um, but they did it. And exactly kind of as I laid it out in the film. Um, and uh, in fact, this morning, if you want some more details, obviously go to gregpalace.com. But uh, and truthout.org yeah. this morning, about a f- just a couple of minutes ago, they released a, uh, a, f- a fairly lengthy report of mine called the No BS Insider's Guide to the Recount. Because it was Jill Stein called me a few days ago to ask me to announce uh, to get the scoop, really, that yeah. she was going for the recall. And there's been so much misinformation about it that I decided to give a, a detailed view because I spent hours and hours with uh, not only with Jill but with uh, the uh, her chief counsel on the recall, Robert Fatrakis. Yeah. And uh, so I know what they're really up to. And in a sum, it was a Jim Crow election, Margaret. Yeah. That's what happened. Yep. Yep, yep. And, you know, uh, Greg, I just came back from Haiti. I I mentioned that to you. Yes. Another stolen presidential election there. It's a very sophisticated operation, it seems. And it seems as though with every election that happens, we learn something new about the things that are put in place for voter suppression, to disenfranchise voters, and more. But in in terms of this particular election, election the that trump you predicted sadly <laughs> truthfully that trump would win what were some of your concerns in terms of voter suppression well in particular the the new gimmick and and as we learn about things they they learn things too the brand yeah, new yeah. gimmick the brand new gimmick is called cross check now what's that about yeah uh, you heard people say that you know donald trump was saying this election's rigged no one was listening to the second part of his phrase he says that the election's rigged cuz people are voting Many, many times. Now, what did this guy mean by that? What he meant was, and he he, he referred to, he made some references to the Pew Trust and some other things. What he was claiming is that there are over a million people who have voted twice, at least, in uh, two different states. In other words, uh, Margaret Prescott votes in Georgia and Margaret Prescott votes in Virginia. And a million people, and we know the color of those people, a million people voting uh, voting twice. Now, voting twice, Margaret, is a federal crime. It's also a crime in every state, but a federal crime, five years in the slammer. The last person, there was one, 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 one person. Not a million. This year, <laughs> one person, a Republican in Wisconsin, who is, by the way, given four years in the slammer. Mm-hmm. It's not, you, you get caught, it's real easy, because your name and address and everything's on the voter roll, it's pretty easy to catch it. So... What about this million and how does it affect this election? It's a lot. No one was noticing that behind his claim, in fact, was a whole program to purge voters of color. And it's called Crosscheck. It was put together by his henchman named Chris Kobach. Kobach is the mm-hmm. guy who said he could that Trump should build a wall and make Mexico pay for it. He wrote the SB 1070 law for Arizona, the driving while Brown law, the unconstitutional racist law that racist law. He's he's the guy who invented the Muslim tracking software that they're going to implement. By the way, he did that for Homeland Security under Bush. Bush personally said, shut that thing down. It's racist. Bush, George W. Bush said that. Now, this is the guy in charge of this program to oh remove God. voters. What he did was 
He's the Republican Secretary of State of Kansas. He got, and this is all in the film. I hunt this guy down, in fact, in the film. Um, he gets the uh, he gets all the thirty Republican secretaries of state to combine all their voter rolls, and then he looks for people voting twice. Now, if, hey, if you catch a double voter, send him to jail. No problem in, from my book. But who are these double voters? They wiped out one point one million voters off the voter rolls this year. One point one million. And they did it by saying, okay, James Brown, I'm not making this, 288 guys named James Brown in Georgia. This is real from the list. Yeah. 288 guys named James Brown. Believe it or not that there's other James Browns in the country or, or that the, supposedly those same 288 James Browns voted somewhere else under the name James Brown. Now, here's the interesting thing. It's it's James Brown Jr. was supposed to be the same person as James Brown Sr. James Thomas Brown is supposed to be the same person as James Edward Brown. This is for real. So they and just illegally removed a whole set they of people illegally removed who likely people. happen to be close to my color. Well, let's put black it this or brown way. People. Margaret Prescott's not too common a name, but the, the history of slavery yeah. is that black folk share a lot of names like James Brown mm-hmm. um, and uh, Jesse Jackson. Uh, 53% of all Jacksons are African-American. Uh, and then, of course, who gets really slaughtered. Jose Garcia, there are 836,000 Garcias in the United States. A lot of them are named Joe or Jose. They got challenged. And in addition, besides and Maria Hernandez, in my film, I actually meet Maria Hernandez, who admits that she votes many, many times. So it was really Rosario Dawson just putting me on. But it's in the film. <laughs> but it's no joke. And, 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 of course, Willie Nelson, by the way, is in the film, too, because he's on the list, which is unusual, because he's supposed to be also voted as a black woman named Willie Mae Nelson. Willie yeah. Nelson, the singer, the country singer. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah. so, but they use it to challenge folk. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, and David Lee, lots of David Lees in the United States. The Asian American community, especially the Korean community, Kim Park Ho Lee, that's it. In the, in the right. Korean community, they are really up in arms. No one's talked about this in the U.S. mainstream press. Uh, thank God we talked about it on Pacifica. I put it on, on Democracy Now. Yeah. Uh, but it's. Um, and you know, and as you, that that is a story that is suppressed. So you've got the cross check, check story. That's, that's one point one million plus. You've got right. You've got this massive problem of, of these brand new uh, Jim Crow laws, yeah. like so called voter ID laws. You know, and and now, for example, in Georgia, and they had this that's spreading all over. And this guy Chris Kobach becomes head of Homeland Security, as we expect. He's hoping to uh, change the law so that you'll have to prove you're a citizen. Well, that sounds. Oh, yeah, only citizens should vote. But only citizens do vote. We don't have a bunch of aliens from outer space or Mexico voting. But, again, they use this to attack uh, the Hispanic voter. I can tell you right now, like my uh, my daughter's in Georgia. They ran her through a ringer for three months to let her vote because that's the other – that's the other – Voters of of honorary color, yeah, the, the students, the, the students, and, and students in Florida, and uh, three, in Florida and some other three states months as well. to get her for she fought because she wasn't going to let it go, but she could prove she was a citizen because she's one of the few nineteen year olds with a passport. It's hard to prove yourself. You have to have your original birth certificate or passport, social security, driver's license. They don't count because any alien can get those and must in the U.S. Uh, so that it yeah. it wiped out. Lots and lots and lots of young voters. So given the fact that uh, Hillary, whatever you think about her, right, um, her, uh, you know, she's winning the popular vote. The number increases each and every day. Michigan, Trump won 10,000 votes. Wisconsin, 22,000 votes. Pennsylvania, 65,000. Those, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if those had flipped or would flip in this count that uh, the Stein campaign is trying to do, it would make a change in the election. So yep. how much do you think these types of operations, the voter suppression or the Jim Crow laws, as you call them, rightfully so, um, along um, with wh- what what impact do you think it had overall on the election? I think that six states were flipped. Six uh, states. Yeah. From my count. And I, when I say I think I'm a statistician by training as well as an investigator. Yeah. And I went through this very carefully. Um, we actually have, I, you know, the cross checklists were supposed to be secret, but I got my hands on them. And I could tell you 50. I just sent it to the ACLU, the list. They're going to act on it. But again, 
How can so they act why? now? But, but I would say in, in Michigan, yeah. 50,000 uh, votes were lost to uh, Clinton. And, uh, that's five times Trump's plurality. Mm. In, um, in Wisconsin, you had a, a whole series of games. We had like uh, what are called undervotes and, and overvotes. Again, if you go to my Truth Out article or gregpals.com on the, the information on the recount, they're not looking for Russian spies in the software. Yeah, we know that in Milwaukee alone, <laughs> like, there were 51,000 fewer voters from the last election cycle. Um, a lot of that due likely to, to voter suppression. Yes, well, what so happened was they, they— Why is it the Clinton campaign beating down your door? I mean, six states that could flip? Well, because of this, to get this information, the, you know, I, <laughs> I'm being facetious I, I just, here. You know, I, I know, but actually, it is a very there is a good question uh, yeah. about it because I remember a couple of years ago Bill Clinton grabbing me at a party, believe it or not, saying we're going to really do something, and I said, okay, you know, let's see. <laughs> I'm watching. I'm a journalist. I'm happy to report. Let's see what happens. Nothing. They, there is still the fear of the black voter within the Democratic Party because there's one thing the Clintons would there's only one thing that the Clintons fear more than losing the White House. It's losing control of the Democratic Party. And the that's not their voters, despite what you saw on TV in the in the South with African American women. The reason you know, there wasn't a lot of enthusiasm in Ohio and Michigan uh, for the uh, Clinton campaign. So what's happening is that, you know, um these are not Voters that they want to protect because in the primaries, it's not their voters. So you've got the, the, the problem, for example, um, in uh, – there were tremendous ID law ch- – not only are they highly restrictive in Wisconsin, but the courts ruled that these laws could be – they were removed by the courts. Then a federal court um, reimposed these ID restrictions. So you had the problem that at the last minute – New ID restrictions were basically enforced. People didn't even have time to get the the IDs that they wanted. Right. You've got this problem that basically student IDs, for example. Okay, you needed a, a state photo ID. A gun license, you could use. A student ID, you can't, you can't use. Right. Well, let me ask you this, though, um, because, I mean, I'm an immigrant. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I do vote, uh, you know, here in, in the United States now. But... One really begs the question, when I look at what happened in Haiti, what happened here in the United States, why the heck should anybody trust elections anymore? Because it just seems as though you do all this terrific work, you Mm -hmm. find out how they do it, right? Mm -hmm. And yet not that much is being done about it. And we're now facing the Trump administration controlling all aspects of government, including the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. We know that we need a a movement from the bottom up, as far as I'm concerned, to the barricades. But I think a lot of people around the world are asking that question. I spoke to a young man in Haiti who said, I'm not even going to bother to vote. When I said why, he said, well, the United States always picks our president. It doesn't matter who we vote for. So that said, something about the lack of integrity of the voting system, period, Greg. Well, but that's one thing I worry about. They want you to give up. Yeah. And that's why you should vote because they don't want you to. Now, here, here's here's the thing is that – and here's the very, very bad news and we straight about it. This election could not have happened if the Supreme Court hadn't gutted the Voting Rights Act in 2000, 2013. This is the first – President, President election yeah. we've had in half a century without the full protections of the voting you rights. You think we Act. could have had a different outcome? Apps, there is zero question because I've been going around the country and looking at what's happened. The rule, there's no doubt that the Voting Rights Act and a better Supreme Court would have blocked Wisconsin. Pennsylvania had these horrible. Remember, Hillary lost the five swing states controlled by Republican elections chief. She won the one Virginia where the Democrats yeah. controlled the voting. So we know what happened. Is it there's something different about that state? No, Virginia. No, no, no. That's not true. And, you know, the idea of Michigan and Wisconsin in presidential years, these are slam dunk uh, Democratic states. And you have the exit polls, which are never wrong. Sorry. The, the, you know, the U.S. State Department uses exit polls to determine if a uh, if an election is honest. We rejected the results the official results in Ukraine, in Peru, in Serbia, because the exit polls were different. Here we say the exit polls are different. Say, oh, the exit polls are wrong. No, 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 no. But but a lot of it is the votes that are never, as I explain in the in the story and truth out and recount and explain the film, the best democracy money can buy. 
we have a lot of votes that are never counted, thrown in the garbage. It's usually voters of color. In fact, here's a statistic that'll make you sick. If you're black, you're 900% more likely to have your vote disqualified than if you're white. Yeah, this 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 I know. <laughs> Greg, we're going to have to have you back because there's okay. a lot to discuss here. I'm sure our listeners are going to want to be able to see this film, The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, a tale of billionaires and ballot bandits, yep. right? And so we appreciate you coming in and we hope that you'll come back, but we're out of time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you would believe that. Oh, no.